Hey guys, this is James from MasterOrganicChemistry.com, and this video is called Learn Eight Mechanisms for the Price of One. And in this video, we're going to go through eight mechanisms of reactions of ketones, aldehydes, and carboxylic acid derivatives. And although the reactions themselves might look very different, since the products certainly are, we're going to be able to go through the mechanisms of these eight reactions very quickly because there's something extremely fundamental that each reaction has in common. And before we get started, just note one thing. Note how in every single case we're adding an acid catalyst. We're always adding something in the presence of acid. Now, what do these reactions have in common? We keep things a little bit cryptic here. That's what they have in common. And we'll explain what that means in just a minute. So here's our first reaction, Fischer esterification. We take a carboxylic acid in the presence of excess alcohol and an acid catalyst, which we're gonna call HA, and we end up with an ester. In the first step, the HA protonates our carbonyl oxygen and we obtain the species here. Now, it's actually also okay to draw a lone pair from the OH coming down, forming C double bond O and a C double bond O breaking and we form our OH here, it ends up being the same thing. And for our purposes, we're actually just gonna do it the first way. Now, once we protonate the oxygen, this is gonna make the carbon next door less electron rich. In other words, it's gonna increase its electrophilicity. It's gonna become much more reactive towards nucleophiles. And our major nucleophile in solution is the excess alcohol, in this case, ethanol. And so a molecule of ethanol is going to attack this more electrophilic carbonyl carbon. And this mechanistic step is called addition. We're forming a new uh, carbon-oxygen bond in this case and breaking carbon-oxygen pi bond. And this is the product that we obtain. Now we have a protonated oxygen, a positive charge on oxygen, which can now be deprotonated by solvent. And the solvent in our case is ethanol, present in large excess. And then one of these oxygens can be protonated by our acid, which is going to give us OH2, which has a positive charge. This is actually a really great leaving group. Water is a weak base, which is the definition of a great leaving group. Now, showing these two steps, deprotonation and protonation, as separate is actually the long way to do it. Sometimes you'll see them drawn as happening at the same time, which we call proton transfer. We're gonna do it the long way here, okay? Now, once we have our good leaving group, water, the lone pair from this adjacent OH can come down. We're forming a new carbon-oxygen pi bond, and we're breaking a bond to carbon. And we end up eliminating water. So this next step is called elimination. And finally, we have uh, the deprotonation of our ester by solvent, which is ethanol. And our deprotonation leads to our neutral ester as our product. So that's it for our mechanism. Six steps. Protonation. Addition deprotonation, another protonation, so we, together those two steps we can call proton transfer, elimination, and deprotonation. PADPED, P-A-D-P-E-D. -E now, to make things a little bit fun, imagine if we had a keyboard and we assign one note on our keyboard to each of those steps. What would those steps sound like? P, A, D, another P, E, D. Pad pet. All right, let's try this for a different reaction. Acidic hydrolysis of esters. So just like our previous reaction, this starts with protonation of the carbonyl oxygen followed by addition of our nucleophile, which is water present in large excess to the carbonyl carbon, followed by deprotonation of our positively charged oxygen by our solvent, which is water, and then protonation of our OR group, in our case, OCH3, to give positively charged OCH3H with a positive charge on oxygen. Now this is a good leaving group, a weak base. And then elimination so forming new carbon-oxygen bond and displacing, in this case, methanol, 
will give us CH3OH and our positively charged carboxylic acid, our protonated carboxylic acid, which can then be deprotonated by our solvent, water, and we regenerate our acid at the end when we obtain a carboxylic acid. So let's go through those six steps again. We've got protonation, addition, deprotonation, protonation, elimination, deprotonation. Pad pad. Let's look at the third reaction, acidic hydrolysis of amides. And again, we're going to start with protonation of the carbonyl oxygen. We're going to make our carbonyl carbon much more electrophilic. Our nucleophile present in large excess is water that attacks the carbonyl carbon in an addition reaction. We deprotonate our positively charged oxygen. Now we're going to protonate our nitrogen by acid. We're going to form NH3+. Plus. This is a good leaving group. It's going to be a weak base. Much better leaving group than it would be if it was just NH2 itself. And in our elimination step, we form NH3 and our positively charged carboxylic acid. And then finally, deprotonation by our solvent, water, will get us to our acid catalyst again and our carboxylic acid at the end. Going through these six steps again, we get protonation, addition, deprotonation, protonation, elimination, deprotonation. Pad pad. So far, we've only looked at carboxylic acid derivatives, but this mechanistic pathway also works for some aldehyde and ketone derivatives, such as imines, which contain a carbon-nitrogen double bond and are formed from aldehydes or ketones. So this is called imine hydrolysis. So we're actually starting with an imine. We're going back to our starting aldehyde or ketone using aqueous acid. Now, just like the previous three reactions, we're going to start with protonation, this time of nitrogen. Then we're going to add our nucleophile, which is our solvent, water. We're forming carbon, oxygen carbon. We're breaking carbon nitrogen. Then we deprotonate the positively charged oxygen with our solvent, in this case, water. And then protonate our neutral nitrogen with an acid to give us a positively charged nitrogen. It's going to be a much better leaving group. Then eliminate our leaving group, which will become a neutral amine. And then finally, deprotonate our positively charged oxygen with a base. I'm drawing it as the amine here, but actually this is acidic enough such that the positively charged carbonyl could be deprotonated by a number of different species in solution. So there's our mechanism. Pad pet, same as the previous three examples. And of course, this actually works the other way around. So starting with an aldehyde or ketone, uh, we're, if we add an amine and an acid catalyst, we'll end up with an imine. So starting off with protonation, although this time we're going to add our amine, and then deprotonate our nitrogen, then protonate our oxygen. This is going to make it into a better leaving group than it was before. Eliminate water to form a, a nitrogen carbon double bond, and then deprotonate our nitrogen to give us our neutral imine. So the same thing. So our sixth reaction, enamine formation, will actually put all the steps on one slide because it's going to be the exact same six steps that we saw for the previous five reactions. The only difference between enamine formation and amine formation is that with enamine formation, we're starting with what we call a secondary amine. That is, the nitrogen is connected to two carbons, not one. So there's only one hydrogen on the nitrogen. That is, at the end of the reaction, we do our final deprotonation. We can only deprotonate once on nitrogen. The second deprotonation has to occur on carbon. That's why we end up forming a carbon-carbon pi bond. But other than that, the same steps operate in enamine formation. We start off with protonation. We're adding our secondary amine. Then we deprotonate on nitrogen. So our nucleophile, initial nucleophile, always gets deprotonated in the third step. Then we protonate our oxygen. And if you notice, in each of these mechanisms we've gone through so far, the leaving group, whatever we're kicking off in the end, is always protonated in the fourth step. Okay, that's going to make it into a better leaving group. Then elimination of oxygen, of water. Uh, forming a nitrogen-carbon double bond. And then here is the 
more interesting different step for deprotonation in enamines in that we're deprotonating on carbon, we're deprotonating a carbon-hydrogen bond and instead of a nitrogen, there's no hydrogen to remove on nitrogen. So we're forming a carbon-carbon double bond, we're breaking carbon-nitrogen uh, pi bond and we're forming our enamine at the end. Okay, and I should have shown water as the final byproduct here as well. Uh, but this is the exact same six steps that we saw in the previous five reactions. All right, well, if you noticed, see how each of these reactions are in equilibrium? That is, they go forward and backward. We just drive in the reaction in one direction or the other. That means that each of these six steps are reversible. And if you do the reverse of PADPED, you actually get PADPED. So protonation of enamine in our first step leads to formation of this, what we call a minium ion. Then addition of our nucleophile, water, followed by deprotonation of our nucleophile, gives us our neutral species, which is then protonated on nitrogen by our acid. And then elimination of our positively charged nitrogen gives us a neutral secondary amine and then that is deprotonated the oxygen is deprotonated to give us a neutral ketone in this case and uh, I'm showing this is the base but we could of course have water acting as the base to positively charged carbonyl protonated carbonyl is quite an acidic species so it ends up again being the exact same six steps so the last reaction in this sequence is called anhydride formation. Sometimes you'll see this, sometimes you won't. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take two equivalents of the same carboxylic acid, and we can add an acid catalyst, such as maybe a drop of sulfuric acid, something like that. We form an anhydride and we kick off water. And it's gonna go through the same sequence of steps. So we start with protonation of the carbonyl oxygen followed by addition of our nucleophile, which is a carboxylic acid, OH, it's possible to show the carbonyl acting as a nucleophile as well if we use the resonance form, but we're keeping things simple here. Deprotonation of our nucleophile, so uh, by our solvent, which is our carboxylic acid, followed by protonation of one of the OH groups, then elimination of water, and then deprotonation of our positively charged carbonyl. And then we end up with our anhydride, we've lost water, and we've regenerated our acid catalyst. Same six steps. And that's what all of these reactions have in common. They have these six steps in common. And you might notice the first step is always going to be protonation of whatever we're starting with, with our acid catalyst. The second step is always going to be addition of our nucleophile to that carbonyl carbon, whatever it might be. Our third step and our fourth step essentially move a proton from our nucleophile to what's going to eventually become our leaving group. And notice how we have the leaving group prominently displayed in each of these examples. And then finally, our last step is deprotonation of the positively charged species to give us our neutral compound in the end. And of course, if you ever need any help remembering the mechanisms of these eight reactions, all you have to do now, since you've watched this video, is play this annoying song in your head. The last note is that organic chemistry is like this. There's a lot of different patterns in the mechanisms of organic reactions, not just in carbonyl chemistry and carbonyl derivatives like we've talked about, but in other chapters of your textbook as well. So look for patterns, break reactions down into their steps, and you'll find it's a lot easier to remember how reactions work. If you found this video useful, if you'd like me to make more videos like this, take two seconds and upvote this video, or of course, share or comment. And come back to MasterOrganicChemistry.com for more organic chemistry study tips.